Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope this lighting is all right. Uh, it's a, sort of sunny, but not too much. <laughs> anyway, um, I have a, a testimony from one one of you, our sisters, Aubrey, um, here about bad food products. Okay, now th this is part of the reason I do the recalls when Tessa sends me the recalls because the Lord has specifically told Aubrey a message about food. But before I get started on all of that, I want to say to someone very, very special to me, I am sorry that when I was telling folks about trying to get off my meds and I had someone helping me some with my supplements. I should have said thank you to the, our sister in Christ, Hope, who has blessed me faithfully. And I have only been able to get what I do get. And any little extras that I need because of you. And I thank you very much. I hope you see this hope. And I should have said that then. So I want to try. I it's. I know some people want to be totally anonymous. But I don't think anybody's going to know who you are. Because you never comment with the word hope in it. That I know of. Okay. I just... I don't ever want to hurt anybody's feelings. And I got to thinking about that after I re-listened. I listened to the video as it's uploading. And then I thought, man, I just said some lady's helping me. Duh. How hurtful. I am so sorry. My sister in Christ. That means the world to me. All right. Let's get on with this product business because the Lord is protecting us he will protect us if we pray over our food but we also need to do our part by kind of looking at stuff picking out when we pick out stuff at the store you get it home you open a package look at it every time I get out my bread because I keep it like a loaf of bread I'll use for two or three weeks. But it stays in the fridge. And I'll smell the whole bag of it. If there's the least moldy smell, I usually toss it. But the way I've been lately, uh, you can't just run to the store and buy a loaf of bread. <laughs> I will pick out my two pieces and examine them carefully. And if there's anything on it, I just cut it off and pray over it. That's And that's how it's going to have to be after it's going to be really hard to buy a loaf of bread. You're not going to be able to just toss it because there's a little bit of mold on some of it. Having said that, let me read this. All right. Let me see my placements changed. It's okay, I guess. All right. Good morning, sister. This week, I experienced something with my food bought from the grocery store. And it's actually horrifying to think what is really going on. I bought dates. I started to eat them. I ate several others. I ate several others that were just fine. And then... I bit into one and I tasted something slightly like mold. I spit it out and opened it up. The part where I bit did not have the mold. Parentheses, that was God. Uh, close parentheses. But on the bottom part, it's almost pitch black on the inside. I put this date in a baggie 
to see if the mold inside of it would grow. So far it has not. She dated this the 26th. Let me tell you something. I'll just pause right here for a second. Let me tell you something. Google. <laughs> it's like kids in a playground. It's like it wasn't enough for them to take down my original channel. Oh no. They had it. They took down all things Google when I, where I had the lion and the lamb picture. That's gone. I've been having to re sign in to use Google Mail. I lost all my Google Mail for. I guess it was two days because Monday I, got, I thought, I'm all caught up. I can't believe this. I'm not getting any new email. And I knew I had gotten a letter from uh, my dear friend and our brother in Christ over in the UK, and it was gone. And I'm like, I know I didn't answer that letter. I mean, I know I have a bad memory, sort of, you know, who doesn't with all the chemicals around, but... And I'm getting older. Well, anyway, <clears throat> that's just how the Lord made us. We start losing our memories a little bit. Now, I knew I hadn't answered that letter, but it wasn't here to answer. So I'm just saying this to say this is why I've got uh, why I've been getting so behind, and all of a sudden I've got 50 emails. They're holding them and then sending them all at one time. And I go to do a video and I'm like, the 18th? Am I that far behind? Because it's like, that wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> you see? So, I'm doing my best and I'm really sorry I missed the prayer request for Crystal. Now, I did write to her. She may have written back. I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of this. Lord, help me to focus and stay on this. But I, uh, Crystal lives on the Nevada-California border, close to it. And their fires were so bad, she'd written me an urgent prayer request on the 20... Let's see, it was four days ago. And today's the 28th. It was the 24th. And I was going to do a video first thing this morning. But... When I realized it was four days ago, I didn't. Last night, I had already turned the Wi-Fi off. I was fixing to head to bed. I don't even know why I opened the computer. I don't even know why. And I saw it there, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this was the 24th. But I thought, I'll write to her in the morning and see if things are better. The smoke was so bad, she couldn't even go outside Hardly did do whatever she had to do and then get right back inside in it. The whole neighborhood there that she lives in, and I'm sure beyond. <clears throat> so she's asking us to please, please, Lord, let it rain or let the winds change. Our God is in control of rain and wind. Satan thinks he is with his harp and chemtrails. And all like that. And yes, they can make it rain. And they can make the wind change. But so can God. And he can do it better. Okay? Amen. Pray for Crystal. And the people over there in California. And the, at the Nevada border. Coming over the mountains. Okay? Let's, um, for now, till I find out from her if it's better. Okay? Now, back to this food business. So, she opened up a bunch of other dates to see if that was inside of them. And no, it was only just this one. It's kind of odd, isn't it? On the inside, not the outside. I never heard of such thing. Has anybody else? Please leave a comment if you have come across this. She says... I don't remember if I told you in the past when I would go to the store I would notice this little speck of black mold in an inconspicuous area on most of the bread in the store. Honey, where do you shop? I know you told me that. I read it. 
And I was thinking, these places like Aldi's, um, let's see, in Aniston, we had a, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but we would go there because the food was so much cheaper. Are they getting the other stores expired or nearly expired food? I don't know, but let's go on. So, well, not even two days ago, my husband brought home a new loaf of bread. And yesterday, when I was making the kids toast, I pulled out a stack of bread and looked down. And on one inconspicuous corner on the bottom, there was that black mold. I took it off and put it in the bag with the date. You know, the fruit date. <laughs> you <could laughs> you should have wrote the date on the baggie, sis, if you didn't. Write the date on it. Because now this is the 26th. I think, or this is dated the 26th, so you figure out how many days before you wrote this. Put the date on it. Okay. Do you remember when I shared with you also when I opened a box of chicken nuggets and all of the chicken nuggets were fine except for one that was covered in black mold? I did seem to remember that. When I read this last night, or this morning, I guess it was. See, there's a pattern here I'm realizing. I never noticed anything like this in my life until this past year. And remember, when I shared with you that for over a year now, the Lord has shown me, quote, Disease, food, eating. She's asking me, do you remember me telling you this? Question mark, end of quote. This has to be what he's been talking about. And this looks very deliberate. Like they are purposely doing this to our food. I'm keeping it in a baggie and I want to see if there is anybody I can get a hold of. Who might be able to help me figure out what this, what the heck this is that keeps showing up on our food. I don't know if maybe I could get a hold of Dr. Tenpenny. When I read that, I thought, isn't she the one from Cleveland, Ohio? Or she went to court in Ohio. I'm thinking it was Dr. Tenpenny, but it might have, it wasn't Mikovitz. So it might have, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Dr. Tenpenny. And then I said, I wonder where she lives. <laughs> Later she tells me she lives in Ohio. So you might be able to get a hold of her. All right. If maybe I could get a hold of Dr. Tenpenny and she might be able to either find someone or know someone or maybe if she knows how to identify what is on this. I'm so angry. The situation calls for exposure. This is absolutely not normal food mold. And it's not molding all over like you would expect food to mold. It's like they don't taint the whole food product. And it looks deliberate, like they are making it less noticeable so you accidentally eat this stuff. I keep seeing them talking about a new variant. Something, I'm pronouncing it that way on purpose, something about a fungus that you can't kill with meds that people are getting that are immunocompromised and my light bulb in my brain went off I do I get that too sometimes <laughs> I'm just teasing and I thought maybe these mold variants or fungus variants have something to do with this 
I don't think so. I think we're looking at something different, but good Lord knows. As I always say, Everyone needs to be praying over their food they bring home and over their drink. Absolutely. Amen. I agree with you, sister. Inspect your food before you eat it. It's a very pertinent warning. I also wanted to update you on a prophecy the Lord gave me about a year ago. I have to pull this down. Let's see. Where was I? I had to pull it down. Okay, about a year ago, that is coming into fulfillment now. Blisters and disease, he showed me. Blisters and disease. Monkeypox is here. I guess there are 200 cases now. And some of those are here in Ohio. Okay. I have to correct on this. Because I saw a video on exactly how they came up with 200. Um, well, I'll finish this. Here we go again. I took pictures of the one date. Opened with the black mold in it next to all the others I opened that were normal. I'll post that. Jesus is coming. That is for sure. Thank you, sister, and God bless. To be honest with you, sis, they all look like barbecued chicken to me. Like you tore uh, wings. The wings. And... They all have black on them. It's the picture. It's the lighting, I'm sure. Maybe if I slide it. Let me save it to photos. Let's do that. I'll see if I can play with the lighting. And figure out which one you're talking about. Okay, And I have to make them smaller or won't go into a thumbnail. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to figure do something with that. Now, about these the monkey pox. I've got to get this off my leg. It's burning me up. Okay, so let me pull this forward. Okay, this doesn't take a whole lot to burn me up. Okay, now, all right, I got to close photos. All right, now about the 200 cases. A man came from, I think it was Nigeria, somewhere in Africa. He flew over here. And they diagnosed him a couple days later with monkeypox. What they did was the CDC was called in. I'm pretty sure it was, it's, they're the ones who do this. They got a list. Okay. What airline did you take? They, they wanted, they, they took. Six rows ahead, six rows behind, and the people beside, six wide. They're on the list. They're watching them. Now, I haven't seen an update on if anybody else came down with it, all right? But this is two days ago, at least, that I saw this. Then they counted... airport personnel, the whole airline staff, where he went to eat afterwards, all the staff that waited on him, or pick, um, I don't guess fixing his food, but maybe the dishwasher. You're counting anybody he had association with since he, he left Nigeria, okay? I'm pretty sure it was Nigeria, but I could be wrong about this, the country, but it's Africa. Okay, so that's where the 200 number came from. Now, whether any of them have actually broke out in the pox, I don't know. Um, if you have anything more on that, um, sis, Aubrey, uh, let us know, and I will be glad to update. 
on that, okay? But for now, I'm going to end this here and say, everybody, remember this. The Lord has been warning the more than just Aubrey to pray over everything you eat. This has been at least a year now. Get in the habit. Pray over everything you eat and everything you drink. You think those bottled waters you're buying from some local spring are perfectly pure? If it doesn't say purified water, and even if it does, if it sat in the back of your car and got hot, plastic is leached into that water. So don't keep it there. You may think you need to because you have nowhere else to store it. Find a place. I know it's good to have some, but switch it out. Like be drinking on it and put more in. You want... So last worst case scenario, you had to take off from wherever you are. You've got water in the car. I get that. But that those thin little plastic bottles will break down if a hot sun comes into your car even on a cool cold day if they're exposed to the sun long enough the bottle heats up and that I want to say dioxin but that might not be the, there's something in the plastic that gets in the water and you're drinking it you don't want that either. So be careful with how you handle what you're storing up. Watch for your expiration dates also. If you're saving up for people after, if you you know you're in the first fruits, the first harvest, and you're stocking up for whoever the Lord sends to your home, lots of people are doing that, you know. It's, it doesn't matter because we can pray over it and it'll be good as new. I'm just um, mainly talking about you now while we're still here. If you'd stocked up five years ago, are you sure all that food, if you're eating on it, is still good? If you want to go ahead and eat it, Pray over it. Say, Lord, I trust you to make this food pure and holy for the benefit, for the nourishment, pure and, well, I say sanctified, for the nourishment of my body. Purify it and sanctify it for the nourishment of my body. Yeah, I bless it. And the water, too. I drink tap water and well, my filters, they ran out a long time ago. They're, you know, things add up. You just can't get it all. So I just still run tap water through it, but it's not getting... I pray, Lord, let this filter be like new. And for all I know, it is. Otherwise, I'm drinking tap water. I pray over it, you know. So we don't need to be afraid of what we drink and eat just pray over it okay let's leave it go at that jesus can do all things don't worry about it we're not to worry hey don't make that noise stop making that noise better that's better no not not that one what well, Better. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. You can woof. You can woof. Go ahead. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. And I pray that it's helps, helped you. Um, not to be paranoid about what you buy. But to, to inspect it. Use your common sense. And pray over everything you eat. At home. At your mama's at your sister's, at a restaurant. Pray over it, okay? And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.